In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can take your content to the next level with just one click with Canva's video background remover feature. So in a previous video, we looked at how you can use short video clips, remove the backgrounds, and actually export your GIF as a transparent GIF using a tool called Unscreen. Now this is still the best option for those types of GIFs because unfortunately at the time of recording this, Canva doesn't have the capability for you to export transparent GIFs yet. That might change in the future. But unfortunately with Unscreen on their free plan, it does add a watermark and it does limit you to just a couple of seconds that you can use for your GIF. So it is a little bit limiting and I think that the new feature from Canva is quite competitive in that sense. So if you're looking to add some flair to your presentations or your social media posts or your email marketing campaigns, this is a really, really cool feature and I can't wait to show you around. So let's dive straight in. So within Canva, you can head on over to create a design and really select any dimensions, but I'm going with the presentation dimensions because I think this is a particularly cool feature for teachers and instructors. And then you can head on over to elements and really use any kind of keywords, but particularly this tool works really well with videos featuring people. So I'm just going to search for a person on computer, head on over to videos, and then I'm going to try and select a clip that would be the most natural to be cropped out. So for example, this would probably crop off their heads and the sides of the shirt. So that's not the most natural looking clip there. And then there's going to be some clips that might maybe have a little bit too much movement of the camera like this one here, which can sometimes make the actual background remover tool glitch a little bit too much if there's a little bit too much movement. And those are just things you're going to start to pick up on the more you use it. But this one looks pretty good. So um, there's going to be really not too much clipping and it looks like a pretty nice solid background that might be quite easy for the tool to remove. So I'm gonna head on over to edit video and click on background remover. And that's done a really nice job apart from the, the little glitches on the table here. So what I would do is just crop my video up to the point where the glitches are no longer appearing. And then I would just try to align that with the part of my slide where it would look relatively natural to be placed. And then I can also head on over to trimming this video. So if I don't need it to be the full 23 seconds, I could trim that down, but I'm happy to keep it as long as possible. Now, the main thing you wanna do with this tool, particularly if you're using these video clips in your presentations, is to head on over to playback and make sure loop forever and presentation is ticked on. Otherwise, it's just gonna loop once and then stop. And that's a bit awkward if you're presenting. So make sure that's on loop forever and presentation. You can also do a little bit of adjusting of the video. So if it's a little bit too dark or, you know, maybe not quite warm enough, you want to bring up the contrast, you want to bring up the brightness, you can do some quite funky things over here. Then of course you want to work on the actual slide design. So I'm just going to add a new page to this. So anything I do with the actual template side is not going to replace my little video cutout there and I could use their pre-made templates or I can use the layout function here and add maybe something like the agenda over here because I know my clip is going to feature here so that's going to work pretty nicely for me. Now I'm going to adjust it to my brand styles by using the style option. If you don't see it there just scroll all the way down to more and you'll be able to see styles there. As soon as you click it it's going to add it to your left hand sidebar and if you are a Canva Pro user any brand kits you have set up are going to be here along with your fonts so you can really quickly adjust this template to your fonts and then cycle through a couple of different styles until you find one that you like the look of. So I'm pretty happy with how that's looking and I'll just head on over to my first slide, copy this over and command V to paste it over. And now let's take a look at how this will actually look once I'm in presentation mode. I've just got that on standard and this is how it's gonna look once I'm either presenting or if I were to export this as an MP4 and use it in a YouTube video, for example, where I'm maybe talking about the different things I'm going to be covering in my video. It looks really, really lovely. So if you're a Canva Pro user, it really is that simple. It's such a fun tool to use, but just keep in mind that like with any background removal tool, even when it comes to really sophisticated tools like Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, 
the clearer the background of the person or the object you're looking to remove the better the result is going to be and the less it's going to glitch so if you're putting in a video that has 10 people in it chances are the tool is going to get confused and not going to know what you're actually hoping to cut out of it so if you can give it videos with more solid color backgrounds or fewer moving objects that will definitely give you the best results so let's now look at a couple more ways that you can use this feature one of which would be to just use video clips of yourself that you've imported so i've imported a couple of really quick clips of myself here that I can use that really have a nice easy to remove background like this and this will allow me to really easily use these in my slides or presentations and I can kind of use them in a more interactive way because I'm obviously pointing to something in this case what I would do is definitely make sure I'm looping forever in the presentation mode and then I can head on to, over to elements and look for something like the search bar so this particular slide what it could say is maybe it could pose a question right so maybe i'm talking about people searching for something on google maybe we're discussing seo in a particular course that i'm teaching and i could just use this to just look a little bit more dynamic than just having a, you know a boring old slide so i could say something like you know how do i rank on the first page of google and then let's say you know in the background it's just a little voiceover of me talking about this topic and that looks really lovely so let's have a look at how that might look in presentation mode so that looks pretty cool and it's much more dynamic than just having a slide with a whole bunch of text on it you can talk about it but it keeps people really engaged because it's using a clip of you so that's one option the next option is to just bring in videos from other websites so you don't just have to stick to using canvas video library i also find that it's not as searchable as some other libraries like using pexels.com so for example just using something like woman smiling and heading on over to videos and trying to find videos in here you might find ones like this that would be pretty easy for the tool to crop out or this one in particular so you can decide how large you need it to be in terms of the download even on the free plan so in this case I would probably just go with the SD version I don't need it to be too large but this is completely free for me to download and then just drag into my Canva uploads folder or I can obviously organize things within Canva as well you don't necessarily need to just be chucking everything into your uploads folder but that makes it really nice and easy if you don't want to be using videos of yourself but you don't find that what you're finding within Canva is really working for your purposes this is a really nice sort of middle ground so I would yeah just chuck that in here and then same as before remove the background and that's done a pretty good job there's a little bit of a glitch at the beginning there around her hair so what i would probably do is just remove the first couple of seconds while that glitch is happening and just keep the last couple of seconds there yeah that looks pretty good so lastly this is a really handy tip for those of you using this feature for creating content on social media again if you're not seeing giphy in your left hand sidebar here just head on over to more and you'll have if he has an integration here so you can access it from either direction and let's just have a look at cropping out a gif so you can't natively crop a gif you do have to turn it into an mp4 so let's just use the minions over here you don't necessarily need them to be too large or worry about what's around them this is not too much of a deal it is going to automatically edit your timing to account for the duration of the gif so that's fine and what I would do in this case is just download this one as an mp4 and I just want to go with my current page here and then I'm essentially just re-uploading this gif as a video so that I can crop out the background because gifs are a different file format so they're not going to allow you to actually have anything here in terms of editing the background so I'm just going to erase the gif I'm going to upload my video again into just my uploads folder and if you want, just even before you go through to use the background remover tool, if you want to crop it just to the GIF area, you can, but I don't find that it really affects it that much. And then we just head on over to edit video, background remover. In this case, GIFs 
are generally slightly lower quality so i would maybe just play around with the vibrance and maybe the contrast of the video to make sure it's nice and bright it will have some glitches at the bottom there so i'm just going to crop that out i only really need the top of them there and i can make them a little bit larger and we want to make sure we are putting it on loop and then i could just use them again in you know maybe a slide design like this one they can just be on i mean if it's appropriate obviously they're laughing so it would have to be appropriate to the slide design but if we then go through to presentation mode let's have a look at how that turned out i mean that looks pretty cute i think again it just adds something a little bit extra to your design where it makes the video seem much more interactive because they're cropped out like this and of course this is a great feature to use for social media posts for memes and even for reels. So don't be afraid to play around with it because it really is such a cool feature. Now, the last thing I'll say is with GIFs, it's not really an issue, but with any other videos before you go into presentation mode, or if you're gonna be downloading it as an MP4 for social media, just make sure you're muting the original clip so that it's not taking the audio from that because you potentially might have your own audio over the top. So I'm curious to hear what you think in the comments. Do you think it's a pretty cool new tool or not all that revolutionary and you don't really see yourself using it? Look, I love a healthy debate. So let me know what you think either way. Personally, I really like the tool. I think it's going to really help with my workflow, especially when it comes to my presentation slides for my online courses, because I'm always looking for ways to spice things up and make things more dynamic. And I think it's gonna really add a lot of value in that sense. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to check out more of my Canva tutorials, I've got a whole playlist dedicated to it. So make sure to check out more Canva goodness over there. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in another video again soon.